Okay guys, today I'm gonna address the situation and something that some of you has emailed me and asked me questions about. How do I travel with this? What is this? It's called the Green Mamba. It's the South African Passport. I can just hear, boo, it's almost like a game show where somebody does something wrong and the guy says, um, who was the fifth president of the United States? And they goes, Barack Obama. And everybody goes, no, red lights, boo. That's what I hear when I speak about this thing. So probably the most difficult thing in my travels is to travel with this. And we're going to address that. Get yourself a beer. I'm going to get a glass of wine and we're going to speak about it. All right. So. Let's first of all speak about traveling in particular. If you leave your country, you can't just enter another country without really first knowing what the requirements are. If you travel on a blue or maroon passport, I mean a South African or a European passport, uh, like a German passport, I feel like you don't really know what I'm going through on a daily basis. So this is probably for most South Africans that's asked me, how the hell do you do this? Now you can see I have two passports that stamp together. I've been interrogated on airports. I've been strip searched. I've been searched so much that I think that the girlfriends I had in my life would be jealous about the strip searching that the guys did because they found places I'm sure they never found. I have missed flights. I've been locked up. I have traveled by sea, air, um, on motorbikes, on cars, and I've been to 52 countries. I speak five languages and even that doesn't really help sometimes. So, traveling on the South African passport, there's a few countries that you can go to without a visa. Unfortunately, for most of the countries that you want to go to, you need a visa. So, for instance, the Schengen states, let's start with Europe, which is part of the Schengen states. Brexit, UK is no more part of the Schengen states, okay? You need a, what is called a Schengen visa. How it works, when you apply for a Schengen visa, you have to tell them, I'm going from date A to date B. They will usually want to see return flight tickets and they will issue you only that time that you want to go, maybe a week more. So you go to Greece for two weeks with your girlfriend, your mom or your dad, or your secret partner, and you say, I'm gonna go for two weeks. They'll give you two weeks. You have to have tickets planned. You have to show that you're coming back, etc. That's the Schengen state. I've been to Schengen countries so many times that they, I kind of built a trust with the Schengen states. And on, I guess, my 10 or my 12th time around there that I wanted to go again, I asked for a five year Schengen visa. I understand that right now, sometimes they would allow longer Schengen visas. When I applied, that wasn't the case. What did I do? I told them that I own a boat, or you can tell the people that you want to go sail on a boat, and I gave them an itinerary. I said, I want to start in Martinique in the Caribbean, and I want to sail around the world for five years. I do not have the expenses, the time, the money, the efforts, and all the means to go back to South Africa all the time to get a Schengen visa. I know it's technical, I know it's a lot, but you've asked me, so bear with me. I got a five year Schengen visa. What does that mean? It means that I can go into European territories, which either the BVI's, Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Europe, but only for 90 days within a 180 day cycle. Okay? So for 90 days, I can be in Schengen countries, but only for in a 180 day cycle. So if I overstay my visa for, if I'm in, if I'm in Schengen for three months and one day, they will cancel my visa and deport me. It's a rolling 180 days. So you might have been in Schengen for a week in the beginning, spent time out of Schengen, and then came back for a month, for like I did just go to Poland for a month. That month could count for the first three months of the year, or now it could be counted as month number four is already I've been there for a month. If you're trying to see what I'm trying to tell you, it gets technical. You have to be very, very careful with how you treat your visas. So I have a five-year Schengen visa, then an American visa. 
American B1, B2 visa. That means that you can enter the United States as a tourist or for work related uh, entrance. You're not allowed to work in the United States for an American company or an American flagged vessel, but you are allowed to go for a meeting or you're allowed to go see colleagues. And I need a glass of wine because there's so much information. Oh. So what I've been able to do is travel via sh to Schengen states and to America. When you enter American zones like the USVIs, Puerto Rico, um, St. Thomas, Un United States mainland, they will ask you why you're there and usually give you six months entrance. If you overstay your visa, there's some problems. You have to state why you've overstayed your visa. I have overstayed my visa once and I had some trouble with them because of that. Luckily, because I'm a captain of the boat and weather conditions made it unfavorable for me to leave and then I had some engine troubles, I had to return to the United States. Gets technical because now I left the United States when I needed to. I was in international waters, but when you leave the United States, they don't stamp your passport to say, okay, you've left the country. On day number, say six months they gave me. So number six, month number six, boom, bye, you're gone. I was gone for almost a week and a half in international waters and I had to return. So luckily, as a captain, your duties are to keep a logbook. It is a document that could be kept um, and used in, in, in court of law. So it's very important and make sure that you really fill it out nicely. All these things said, for you guys that South African that have these guys, get yourself a Schengen visa and an American B1, B2. It's a lot of money to get it, but you can get it and then you can start sailing. Just avoid the places that you can't go. Places like Turkey, for instance, you go to Turkey, they'll issue you a visa on the airport for free. Uh, Greece, part of the Schengen zone. So I can basically sail the whole Med and the Caribbean. Well, where, are the, where else do you wanna go? Pacific. If you now go start going into the Southern Pacific, you go to Hawaii, while well, you have an American visa, you're fine. But now soon you go to Australia, New Zealand, guys, we have a problem with that. So for the last five years, I've not been at home. I've been traveling and it's always a concern with this guy. Um, I've had American visas canceled because of certain reasons that you can see. I have had I have two passports because I travel so many places that the one is full, completely full of stamps. And I've got Schengen visas all over. And all I can tell you is to just obey the rules as far as you can. Be kind. Um, don't overstay your welcome. And always adhere to what they ask you to. I've only ever once in my life ever overstayed a visa. And there was really good reason for that, but never have overstayed your visa for whatever reason. So oh, I, I missed my girlfriend too much or no, I wanted to stay a little bit more because I haven't seen Pisa. Uh, so just make, make sure that you have it very nicely documented. If there's any other questions about traveling on a visa uh, and a South African passport, then we can do that on a later one. Please submit your comments. I'm going to do another uh, little chat to you here about maritime law and normal tourism laws because that's two worlds apart what applies for a mariner or a seafarer does not apply for a normal tourist or somebody with a Schengen visa so there's another loophole there that i can show you if you're a qualified mariner how you can stay longer in territories where you don't have the correct passports stuff like seamen's books stuff like boat papers and contracts we'll touch that later so on that note my mouth is dry I'm gonna take a sip of wine. I'm on a beautiful Holberg Grassi 38 that I'm delivering to Barcelona. But if this is before or after the episode that's coming out about this, you'll see that we ran into some engine troubles and we're on our way back to Malta tomorrow with a crew. On that note, you're awesome. You can achieve everything that you want and you know that. Go get them, boy.